Hey guys, Ryan Collector with Gun University. I'm out here with Kyle Lamb of Viking Tactics, and we've been talking about myths and folklore that exist in the firearms industry, about what you should do in certain situations, and what came up was facing multiple targets. You know, what should you do? Should you shoot each target as needed to neutralize the threat, or should you give one shot each? And we said, you know what? There's a way we can figure this out. Let's get a timer, let's get some targets, and let's test it. So we're gonna put three rounds in each of three attackers, but Kyle's gonna try the online prescribed method first, which is one shot each target three times in a row. Yeah, and to keep it fair, we're gonna go start in the middle target, middle, left, right, then I gotta go back to middle, left, right, middle, left, right. One of the problems with this is I'm not sure my timer will go this high. Nah. <laughs> I, I've done this a bunch, so I, I kinda know what the outcome's gonna be, but I would say that if you're watching this, you know, just think about all the driving of the gun, and we're gonna talk about that once we get to it. But hey, I'm ready, I'm gonna get up here and shoot. I got my timer ready. I'm gonna start. All right, uh, one left round side. each target. Three rounds in each target total. All right, shooter's ready. On you, brother. All right, clear. Time is 6.08. Not bad, brother. All right, so let's score them real quick. So I've got, we'll just say that's one. And then I've got two out there, so I, I've got, it uh, took me a few extra rounds. So the okay. way I want to break this down is, um, well, I lost my time there, let me go back. Okay, it was 6.08 seconds. So total 6.08, I'll put my name up here so we can keep track of this, 6.08. Okay, so I hit my first target at 2.24, my second target That can't be right. 2.80. What's that? You, you didn't hit your first target faster than 2.24 seconds. Oh, you mean you did your first run of three? No, my first shot was a 2.24. It's a it's a slow draw from right. concealment. Yeah, right. I mean that's the just the way it is. Okay, so my next uh, shot, my last target was a three point. Okay, so that's shooting a, a 365 with a red dot from a concealment holster. I hope you destroy these times, but you can see where we're at. 224, 2.80, 339. So that's for our first shots. Second shots, I'm not gonna really worry about, but let's worry about our seven, eight, and nine. Seven shot, correction, uh, yeah, seven shots. So that would have been our third shot into that target. Yep. Was a 509. So you started your third string at 509. Yep, 509. 551 and 608. All right, so the important parts of these times are the idea of shooting one target each once, the theory is to get a bullet on that third target as fast as possible. So that third guy didn't get a bullet until 339 with this method. And you weren't done with the entire drill until 608. Those are the two times we need to focus on, right? Yeah, one of the other issues too is if you're, if you're going below the heart here, I've got one that's out there. I got one that's out there and I've got two that are out there. So I hope that was my first round. And I don't know if that was my first, second or third round. I was just shooting one, one, one. So now you're gonna shoot it and you're gonna do it with uh, 320. Yep. And we're gonna see what your time is. We're gonna do the same thing with you and then we're gonna swap over and change up the drill a little bit. Sounds good. All right. All right, shoot ready? Ready. Stand by. Okay, let's go look at this. Okay, so 4.89. So you beat me by a uh, second and well, yeah, full size gun from a but but duty okay, yeah. but that this is this is what I'm going to carry, and this is what a law enforcement officer is going to carry. True. So that's fine. That's, this is how I roll down. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what we <laughs> what we got to do. Okay, so your first target was a 1.75. That's not bad. Second target was a 206. Third target was a 257. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, then we go to number seven, right? So while you're doing those times, the idea here by shooting one target each, the theory is to get onto all three targets faster. That means I had a bullet in any one of the targets by 2.57 seconds into the game. Uh-oh. 
always say was your final time. 489. Okay, I don't know. It's I, I missed a round, but I know that that had picked up your last shot. So, okay. so this it must have been a 489. And bottom line is it took 489 to get three rounds in each target. 175, 206, 257, and so on. All right. Okay, you're clean here, you're clean there, and you're clean there. Now we're going to change it up. And the next time we do it, we're going to go three, three, and three, which is going to complete the same method here. We're just going to see what that time is. Uh, what time that first shot gets into our third target is yep. important. And, uh, and the other targets as well. This should be the same. This can be slightly different, and that'll be a little bit different too. Sounds good. Let's, All do, right, it. let's do it. Going hot. interested to see what happens with the, yeah uh... so what happened on that one was I had a malfunction uh, I had a bullet nosedive so hey that's what happens my time is 691 so obviously that changes it a little bit there mm -hmm. but still think about this 691 not even a second slower with a malfunction with the malfunction okay so my first shot was a 213 so we shot this guy faster okay second shot was a 248 carrying that same yep with that's three rounds into that target uh third round was a 278 okay that's first target down first target first target down in 278 see yep. where we're at okay mm -hmm. and i guess i kind of jumped ahead there didn't i no that's fine i'm sorry i screwed that up now let's go to our second target our second target was 309 348 and 3.7 okay so our second target here took 2.8 takes another second but we've got three rounds into the target yeah less than a second and he's actually neutralized more like seven eight and nine six twenty three six sixty and your malfunction happened before that six twenty three did it yes. okay mm -hmm. i think it happened on my seventh shot because I got a 253 split there and then 691. Okay, so the interesting thing here, I believe, is... Yeah, it's between the second and third target. Oh, okay, okay. So to get the first round into the third target is a 339 here. Mm -hmm. To get the first round of the third target here is... But if we kept the pace here and you didn't have the malfunction, you would have been at about the four second mark. Yeah, yep. I said we run it again to see what the time does. Yeah, let's look at my hits, though. I also got... Uh, mm -hmm. Look at there. I didn't drop a single point that time. So you're so right, why, the malfunction is real, and we got to deal with it. But I want a better comparison from here. And unless we have okay. a malfunction of both, I think we compare it again. All right, I, I, I like that too. But the other thing I want you to think about is, I just shot it clean shooting 3-3-3 three, three, three yep. versus shooting 1-1-1 one, one, one and being a little bit sketchier on uh, having to drive my gun so much. And you were less than a second slower with more than a second of clearing a malfunction, I'd imagine. Yep. All right, my turn. Okay, you're going to shoot it. All right, shooter ready? Ready. Stand by. All right, 371. Wow, that's interesting. So, second run, 371 was his total time. You got all, uh, let's see, how many points you dropped? One I dropped out of the bay. One. Two, one over here. Three, so you still had one round in the kill zone there, and three here, and two I'd over there. I'd say spine is an okay shot. Oh, yeah. Okay, so first shot, 163. You are warmed up a little bit now. Next shot is a 186. Next shot is a 2.06. All right, so. Yep. 206, you've just shot one guy with three rounds over here, 257, you'd shot. I was only on the second guy, 206. Okay, yeah, yeah, yep. So now I have hopefully one guy's completely down before I had one. Yeah, and I kind of I, I kind of screwed up how I wrote this. I should have I should have done that a little bit differently. That no, works. Okay, let's look at uh should we just skip to the, the third round then? Sure. 
So the third round in the target here was the 206. And down there was, how do we do that? I, I broke it been out. missing one before the 411. So we'll, we'll compare. Oh, okay. Right. We missed that same shot. Let's do the third round and the second target. So shot six. Shot, shot six is a 299. And before my third round in the target was a 411. Okay. And then uh, shot seven, eight, nine in the last target. So it's 335 to your seventh shot. So 335 here. Which is 257. Yep. So I was able to get, I was slower on the third target. The third bad guy got to have an extra you know, 0.8 seconds before a bullet went into him. But he was by himself. He didn't have two friends at that time. Because each of his friends already got three shots. And then, uh, let's see where he's at. 354. Hopefully you can read that. 354 and then 371. Okay, so total 371, which is really good. So 371 versus 489. So this doesn't mean that one's better than the other, though, because I'm going to have guys say, yeah, you were faster, but you were slower on that guy. What's the balance here? I think the, so I think the balance also has to be reality. Mm -hmm. And reality is that the chances of having three people step up and all at one time become threats, mm -hmm. I think is a little bit unrealistic. I think the other thing uh, that we talked about was you have a threat, eliminate that threat. If we go into the mindset of one shot, you go boom and you assess, most bad guys are not impressed with one round. If you do a double tap, that's what happens. One hit, one miss, because you go boom, boom, and then you reassess, and now you've had maybe a hit and a miss or two misses. With this technique, you're going one, two, three, and you're in the right focus to put all three rounds in that target. I'm not saying you're not gonna miss. Right. I'm just saying that you have a better focus, and you felt it. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. This way I can shoot this target with three rounds. As I'm doing that, I can be assessing, okay, now that's the next guy or that's the next guy. Maybe you start on this target, you gotta move that direction. My problem too is when you're shooting targets, one of the harder things for people to do is transitioning. Would you agree, yep. Taylor? So doing it three at a time and moving, not even three at a time. I'm just gonna call it handling one threat at a time. I'm only transitioning twice. Versus the other way, I'm transitioning eight times yeah. between those nine shots. Yep. So I'm adding more transitions. My other problem is, even if you've never been to the gunfight and you've never been on a on a real two-way range, you know if you've done competition shooting that your plan just kind of goes out the window the second it starts. And if you go to a stage like an Ipsic match, you're thinking, I'm going to do one, two, then I'm going to leave them in this corner, the three, then mag change. You know how it goes. You get in your head, you forget, you get mixed up. I'm just thinking in the real world, what happens when I start my plan of one, two, three, and this middle guy takes off running? Do I do something tactically horrible because I'm so stuck to my rule and have to get him again yeah, yeah. before I get these next guys? Yep. Or a fourth guy comes in? Guys, even shooting the drill, I caught myself one, two, three, two. No, how about you see a threat, you shoot the threat. I also think it's more legally defensible. I had a threat in front of me, I shot until the threat was gone. I saw another threat, I shot until the threat was gone. I think that's a lot better legally than there's a bunch of dudes in front of me. One guy had a gun and I've trained myself because of you know rangeitis to shoot everybody once. And the other thing I want you to take into consideration is, especially with you, if you're thinking about going to court with this, mm -hmm. if I've shot this target three times and I keep shooting because it's a threat and all of a sudden another target's threat becomes more imminent, mm -hmm. then I'm going to drive that target. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so it, same thing. I'm thinking a little bit different. Like this guy's been shot. It's going to take him how long to bleed out. Mm -hmm. You talked about, you know, shooting him in the, the chest, uh, hitting the... Well, I guess we talked about that on our podcast, didn't we? Yeah, if you've been hunting, you know this. No matter if you hit the heart and the lungs together, that target, that bad guy is going to be alive until he passes out. He's not going to just fall over and die because of some shock. He's going to run out of blood to his brain. So how long can he fight until he passes out? Quite a while. All right, so uh, I'm going to give it one more run. Yeah, let's do it. And try not to have a malfunction this time. All right, so on that first 3-3-3 three, three, three run, I had a malfunction, so... I'm going to do that again. I'm not sure if it was a gun or if it was me. I think I might have bumped up the slide stop because it's a really small gun. No excuses, though. That's the run I had. So I do want to uh, try to redeem myself a little bit. Well, I want to see a better comparison of the numbers. So let's do it. All right. Going hot. That's a little, you mean right over here, Frank? Yeah, total yeah. Amount? So 4.42 was the uh, total time. Yep. He 
wants to write so we can actually read it, I think. <laughs> One point nine six was my first shot. Nice job. Two twenty eight second shot. Two fifty five third shot. So first target was down. Two fifty five. Okay. Fourth shot was a two eighty five, then a three fifteen, then a three forty four. So second target down and three forty four. And then seventh shot was a 382, eighth shot was a 415, and then 442 for my ninth shot. You're gonna like this. Look at this, Kyle. That means you ended up getting your first round on the third target at 382. Yep. Okay. Over here, your first run, when you're doing one round each, you got your first run on the third target at 339. So yes, it, I think it's undisputable it is faster to get a round in the third target by going one each. Yep. That makes sense. However, is it better to get one single bullet hole in the whole group of people in front of you faster? Or is it better to neutralize the biggest threat first and work your way down? Because your total time is quite a bit faster and you are only a half a second difference. So neutralizing two targets as two buddies are down and you're a half second later, do you think that matters? It's, it's such a, it, it's like a can of worms. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you the way that I'm going to train to do it is eliminate a threat and then move to the next threat. I agree with you. So I'm going to do it this way because I think you're setting yourself up for better success. We both were faster with it and you're going to be better success in the real world, especially when that third guy just happened to be, he doesn't even know what his two idiot friends are doing. And now you're shooting a guy because he happens to be there. It's going to solve that. And it solves the problem when someone takes off running one way, a fourth buddy comes in. This first method, yeah, it sounds great on paper, but I think in the real world, you're gonna lose count and you're gonna lose track of what's going on. How about we have a threat, we neutralize the threat. We have another threat, we neutralize that threat. If you wanna get rounds into your third target faster, shoot that target first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, well, here we broke it down for you. I look forward to seeing you guys' commentary and what you think about this, but there's the numbers. You can actually get all three targets neutralized faster by engaging them one at a time rather than transitioning back and forth. And you're going to get faster no matter what technique you use if you get out there and train. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I uh, got back from the range with Kyle and been thinking about this test that we did. And our cameraman brought up a great point at the very end that we didn't address in the video. And I wish we did. Is with Kyle's malfunction, if you use the technique that both Kyle and I prefer, which is to engage the threats as they appear and don't do the one shot each, that third target would not have had a bullet if the gun completely malfunctioned, if you couldn't get it back in the fight. So it's just interesting to think about is that malfunction really delayed that third target getting a bullet, whereas the 111 would have gotten the bullet faster. I guess the question is, is it more important to put single bullet holes out of every target in the group? Or is it more important to neutralize threats as they come? And if malfunction happens, you deal with them then. You know what? I look forward to you guys' comments leave some comments to this. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you appreciate this kind of testing and played around with it. We're doing it for you. Thanks.